Hey guys, how's it going? Rubik's Master here, and today I'm going to be updating one of my most viewed videos of all time, and that is going to be all about the world map. My old one I recorded like almost a year ago, or more than a year ago, I don't know, it was one of the first videos I ended up doing because a lot of people had questions, and slowly over the last year and with many updates, it has gradually become kind of obsolete, especially with the last update. So I'm just going to retire that video after this one's recorded, and this will be the new go-to for that. So I'm going to break this down into three categories. First category is going to be spawning into the world map and, you know, navigating the, the world map into the zones. And then we're going to be going into moving, movement, and your countdown timer and whatnot, and then attacking. But uh, to start off, let's go with how you deploy onto the world map. If you're a low level... Uh, this is for you. So when you get to, I it's been a long time since I've been that level, but it's like command center level three or player level fourteen or so, somewhere around there. Uh, you go into your build menu, you look at your facilities, and the first structure there you see is your global operations. Once you build that, and it comes here, it automatically puts you onto the world map. So. You can get to the world map just by clicking the little map tab down there, but that just takes you straight to where your base is in whatever zone you're in. If you want to look at different zones, you have to press the attack button and click on deploy under the war zones area. This will take you to the world map where you can see all of Europe and you can click the arrow on the right side of your screen to go over into the Middle East and Asia. Now, Let's go back here, because I'm in Normandy. Now when you, like I said, when you build the building, the global operations, you will be automatically deployed. Now if you don't want to stay in the area you're in, you can deploy to a new area, but once you deploy, there's a one to a new area. Once you deploy to a new area, there is a countdown timer of an hour before you can then move inside that area. So let's click on Normandy and click enter and go in here. Now when you're choosing what area inside whatever zone you choose to go to, uh, it really is based on your player level. If this will load, you will see very quickly. <laughs> Alright, so if we zoom out here, you can see that there are tons of different areas with different names. Uh, some of those names are highlighted, some of them are dimmed out. The ones that are dimmed out are outside of my player level range. Uh, you see down here, perimeter right there is 10 to 14. Uh, over here is like 15 to 24. I'm just too low of a level, or too high of a level to go there. If I attack anything inside those levels, I won't gain any rewards. The areas that are highlighted are my optimal level ranges. And there's green, you see the green numbers underneath, uh, like Dead Hill right there says 35 to 44. That means it is one level section below mine. So that's 35 to 44, I'm 48. So I'll still gain rewards from attacking things inside that area, but they will be diminished rewards. Yellow means it's in my player level, 45 to 54. And I'll get a, my, you know, the average amount of rewards from defeating the, the bases in that area. Now, there aren't any places here that are so high of a level, but there is a next level above yellow, and that is red. You get increased rewards if you defeat things inside those areas, but that's going to be high level and pretty difficult. So if you're spawning in here as a level, you know, 13 or 14, uh, you may want to just go ahead and go to a level 15 to 24 area and just get a little bit better rewards as you go. So let's move right on in to skedaddling around the zone. So when you spawn in, you'll spawn into a neutral area. So if I click on this, you can see up in the top right, it says Normandy, capital sector, and it's a neutral sector, player level 65 to 75. So the one I'm in right now is central blocks it is contestable and it is um, oil boost of 17% thorium boost of 
Now, what contestable means? Well, first off, all contestable zones come with resource boosts. So that's really what it's all about. But let's say you are in a neutral zone and someone attacks your base and defeats you. You'll get your limited time defensive bubble and your base will stay in the same spot. However, if you're in a contestable zone and you get attacked and your base is defeated, you will be shoved out of that contestable zone into a neutral zone and then you will get your bubble. So you won't be getting the resource boost until you move back into the contestable zone. But that's not that big of a deal. So uh, moving is a little bit trickier now than it used to be. You know, it used to be you could just click any square, move to it, and then when, or any hexagon, whatever, move to it, and when you were done doing what you were doing there, you could move to a new area. Now, anytime you move, based on how far you move, there is a countdown timer to when you can move again. So let's just uh, play around a little bit here. Let's move myself three squares. Or two squares. So it's three minutes per square. So I move there, and now I have to wait nine minutes before I can move again. Now, how this works for attacking bases is fairly decent. So. If I click on this outpost here, you can see I can attack it for 680 oil. But if I go for something a bit further away, over here, say, the oil cost increases with how far away it gets. Now, this is a little bit of a deterrent, and it does stop you from sniping people all the way across the map. However, if there's someone a little ways away, and you want to attack them, don't be afraid to do it if you think you can win. Because if you win, you get a kickback of some of that oil. Kickside hasn't been very forthcoming with how much oil you actually get based on the situation, but I attacked an outpost and it cost me 680 oil, and I got like 1,000 something oil back. So you can actually get more oil back than you spent to go attack it. So it negates a lot of your oil repair costs, and it's basically just a refund. So, if you deploy into here and you're, in a, and you're in an alliance war and all of a sudden you need to bail out you can let's see let's move back here you see those tokens there underneath the, the timer you can use those to get rid of your timer uh, you only get these tokens through your daily crates you see up here at the shop you only get them through there so you want to collect those to max them out but uh, let's just press finish Boop. I finished, I don't have a timer, and now I can move if I want to. And that is how you skedaddle around the map. So, we covered attacking, we covered map movement, we've covered pretty much everything. So, um, let me just touch on a couple little follow-up things real quick. So, this area does give 17% oil boost and 13% thorium boost. That is fairly significant. You definitely want that oil boost if you're going to be an aggressive attacker. Now, there are other areas, uh, not in this particular zone, that give massive oil boosts. But those areas are going to be fought over constantly. There's going to be a lot of fighting. If you're a lower level, you're probably going to get kicked out. So it might be better for you, if you're starting out the game, to choose a spot with a low oil boost and just sit in it so you can get the consistent boost. I believe there's areas, uh, yeah, Val Valley Cross, here's another one. Slightly lower boost, only by, you know, 2 or 3%. So not that big a deal, but pick an area that has a boost and sit in it and get that extra oil. Um, the other, the last little thing we need to talk about here is fobs. So you can deploy fobs anywhere adjacent to your base. And you only have three kinds. There used to be more, but now you only have three. You have tank reinforcements, infantry reinforcements, and helicopter reinforcements. I'm sorry, that says infantry vehicle reinforcement. So it is a little bit different. Base cost it is 200,000. Uh, my tank reinforcement is level two, so now it costs me 400. Now, you place those defenses, and they help you when you attack someone and when you're defending, but they only help you not your alliance members like they used to. Um, now, when you, if your fobs are not destroyed 
you can scrap them and get some resources back. If you leave your zone and go to a different zone on the world map, your fobs are automatically scrapped for you and you get those resources back. But if they're destroyed, you get nothing. And that's really it, guys. The world map honestly has been a little bit simplified. It's a little less cluttered. There's a little less weird stuff going on over tiny amounts of resources. And generally, it's just a more awesome place to be. There's a lot more action going on. I'm like, this is the first time I've really been able to be on the map and active and really enjoy it. So I hope this video helped you guys out. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And um, until next time, y'all have an awesome day.